term of the following arithmetic sequences. In order to find the general term of an arithmetic sequence, there are two things you need. You need to know the leading term, I'm sorry, the first term, a sub 1, and you need to know the common difference, d. So in part a here, what's our first term? Negative 1. What's our common difference? What number do we keep adding to get the next term? 2. And by our definition, that means if you took any number except for the first one, and subtract to the previous number, you should always get 2. So 5 minus 3 is 7 minus 5. Over here is 3 minus 1 is 1 minus negative 2. Up the line. Hooray. Uh, all right. So now that you have your a sub 1 and your d, use this formula. So if a, and a sub n is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, then you would say a sub n is negative 1 plus n minus 1 times 2. So distribute your 2 through. And combine like terms, what do you get? Yep. Or 2n minus 3, your choice. Notice the general term of an arithmetic sequence is linear. You can think of it as a y equals mx plus b kind of deal. Whereas discussed, the slope 2 is also the what? The common difference. And that should make sense because slope is rise over run. Our run is always 1 because we keep adding 1 to get the next term. So when the uh, run goes up 1, the rise increases by 2. And you can check your work here because if you picked a number for n, like for instance if I said find a sub 5, if we put in 5 and for n, what number should we get? 7, because that's the fifth term. What's your first term? What's your common difference? Get. So we'll have a sub 1. a sub n, excuse me, is the a sub 1, 7, plus n minus 1 times negative 12. Please be careful with the negative. Distribute your negative 12 through. Good. And then combine like terms. Negative 12n plus 19. Hooray. And check it. If you plug in 1, you should get 7. Plug in 2, you should get negative 5. So on and so forth. 